Hey everybody, welcome to Digital Charcuterie. It's me, your fourth favorite bald person, Andrew Fantasia. Thanks for tuning back in. We're going to talk about some DC Superheroes United again tonight to talk about what's been going on in this campaign. If you saw the thumbnail, you know some big stuff dropped. As usual, hey, you like this video? Feel free to drop a like, give some love to the subscribe button and the bell and all that. And if you're a fantasy fan, don't forget, I'm a fantasy author. So do me a solid if you will, and check out on Amazon my fantasy novel series, We Were Wizards. That's right, I love Lord of the Rings, folks, but J.R.R. Tolkien's estate has enough money, so why buy more of those when you can buy a fantasy novel that is just as fun, just as entertaining, and it was written by this lovable gent right here. The purple one is the first one, and then the next one is this. We Were Wizards is my pride and joy, and you can find it on Amazon right now in three different formats. So go check it out. Alrighty, big stuff dropped today. We got a new box, and boy, do I have some stuff to say about this box. So let's just get right into it. Alright, here we are back on the page for the Superheroes United, um, all the stretch goals and stuff like that. So Raish Al Ghul has been unlocked. We can see here he's green now. Everything's green. Everything's good. That means that little check mark. We got him. We got Raish Al Ghul, which means we also got Talia and Lady Shiva officially in the game, and hopefully in the game in miniature form sometime as well. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. After Raish Al Ghul. We're going to jump over here to the hero. And I love how they've been doing this, by the way. They've been staggering these so well, where they've just gone hero, villain, hero, villain, hero, villain. Um, the Marvel ones tended to give you fewer villains, but I think Simon and Spin Master are aware that DC's lineup of villains is ginormous and excellent compared to Marvel. They really got their villain game down, so I'm glad to see they're keeping the love spread pretty evenly. So let's take a look at the next hero that we unlocked, which is somebody I never expected to see in a season one of a DC United game. Jonah Hex, the cowboy with a scarred face and a heart of gold. He's kind of deals with the supernatural side, but in the Old West. So uh, the only time you ever really see the heroes interact with Jonah Hex is when they time travel. The Legends of Tomorrow did it a few times. Jonah Hex was pretty fun on that show. Uh, he has an arch enemy, and I can't remember what his name is. It's just like a rich, evil, western guy. Uh, but let's take a look at Jonah Hex's cards. I, I doubt that villain will make it in here because he was pretty obscure. That is definitely a season three kind of villain. So Jonah Hex has a standoff card here. Discard a bounty token from an enemy about to damage you to ignore one damage you would take. That's right. He's got these bounty things. So he's got this special card with instructions of how to set up these bounty tokens, essentially. At the start of the game, he may assign bounty tokens to up to two villains or henchmen. If he manages to defeat them, he gains one wild token. To to put it on a villain would be not ideal, because once you defeat a villain, the game is over, right? So getting that wild token won't make a difference. So he will be really good against people with multiple henchmen, like Ra's al Ghul. A deadly shooter, Jonah Hex, can fan his attacks, striking both his location and an adjacent one. Fast on the draw, he may gain tokens for extra shots or just recharge his gear. But if there's a standoff, he may decide to give up on a bounty in order to avoid being attacked. And then he's also got the Quick Draw Holster, which lets him fire off a surprise shot at enemies in adjacent locations. They're really embracing the equipment in DC Superheroes United. So I find with Marvel United, the equipment, I was like 50-50. I was like, I love these cards. They're cool. They're fun. I might try them every once in a while, but it looks like with DC Superheroes United, they they really want you to play with equipment. Uh, so much so that I feel like all those double wild cards they're going to print might not end up getting much usage, but this is cool. And look, he's got a little hatchet, little axe. Uh, I don't remember Jonah Hex ever having a little axe, but I like it. Uh, I'm very happy to see Jonah Hex in the game. Almost as happy as I am to see the next character, the villain, Ocean Master. Arguably, Arthur Curry, uh, Aquaman's arch nemesis, Ocean Master, was once the king of Atlantis and also the half-brother of Aquaman. And he's all jealous because he's like, ooh, I should be king. You're not even a pure-blood Atlantean. And they get into arguments. And man, what a cool look. Look at that. He's got his big trident, his purple and black and then the red and the cape. Ocean Master looks dope. I don't even care that he doesn't have water on his base. He doesn't need it. He, he's striking enough as it is. This is, And so is his dashboard. Look at that. Gorgeous. 
So another character who's going to be dealing with water tokens. Now, it doesn't say he comes with any, but I guess that's fine because he's coming in the same box as Mira, and she's got plenty, and so does Black Manta. So th th we're covered for water tokens. So it says here, Ocean Master is out to reclaim his rightful place as a ruler of Atlantis and get his revenge on the surface world. He starts by placing water tokens on half the locations in the game. When attacking with his trident, Orm deals even more damage when he's in a water location. And when he summons lightning, it strikes a hero in every location with water. And then he's got Dagon Warrior Thugs, which I think that might be kind of hinting at a little Easter egg uh, reference to H.P. Lovecraft, to the tales of H.P. Lovecraft because there was a cult called the Esoteric Order of Dagon, and I think they were based around water creatures, too, if I'm not mistaken. There were water creatures called Migo in the Cthulhu mythos, but Dagon was a different thing, if I remember right. So I wonder if that's a tie-in or if that's just a DC lore thing that I'm just too dumb to understand. Um, so Ocean Master Plan is to flood the entire world. This is represented by crisis tokens that occupy the thug civilian slots so that the crisis tokens are him flooding stuff. Cool. And once half the locations have the majority of their slots filled with crisis tokens, Ocean Master is victorious. He wants to kill all the humans because he doesn't like them because he thinks Atlanteans are superior. So he's basically Water Magneto. Now, quite a few people stipulated that Ocean Master, if he ever were to appear in this game, should be a purple character. I mean, it obviously matches his whole chic he's got going on, but he has been known to begrudgingly team up with Aquaman every now and then. I haven't seen the second Aquaman movie, but that's what uh, seems to be happening there. Maybe we might get a reveal in the future that that is the case, but for now, he's red. He's a plain old villain, and I'm okay with that. I, I think I could take or leave him as a purple figure. Then, speaking of which, we uh, once we unlocked Ocean Master, or, or rather to help unlock Ocean Master, we got today's big reveal, and that's this right here. A new expansion box, the Justice Society of America, or as I'm going to call it a few times over the course of this video, Civil War, but with DC characters, with a sexy DC coat of paint, slapped on top of it. That is exactly what it is. It's really the Marvel United Civil War box, but with the DC coat of paint. And speaking of coats of paint, let me quickly close this for a second. I need to mention here how when I first saw this art, the, the core box art uh, for DC Superheroes United, I was like, that's fine, but I, it's not I prefer the Marvel ones. The Marvel ones are just more dynamic and, and colorful and bright and, and just I just like those better. I didn't dislike this. I just liked it less than the Marvel one. And the Teen Titans one I thought was really dull. Not quite what I like to see out of these United boxes. But then along comes these two, Metropolis and now Justice Society. As far as I'm concerned, these are beautiful. Th these are how United boxes should look. The colors just pop. The, the characters look like they're leaping out of the image as opposed to here where they're just kind of stagnant. Uh, I, I love these boxes and I really like this Justice Society of America box. Obviously, if you are a purist, if you're a DC hardcore fan, you know the Justice Society is normally, usually made up of way different characters uh, than what we get here. I get it. They need to change things around. I mean, the Civil War box did not have characters that were a big deal in the Civil War comic either, but it is what it is. But that's okay because look what we got in here. There's a lot of stuff going on. We have Black Canary, one of my favorite DC heroes, Shazam, well, Billy Batson, a.k.a. Captain Marvel, who is sometimes known as Shazam, even though that's not really his superhero name, but whatever, We're, we can call him Shazam. I'm not going to begrudge them for using that name, uh, but normally he's called Captain Marvel, but I, I get it. They probably want to avoid using the M word over at the Distinguished Competition. Uh, Hawkman, another one of my favorite DC heroes, particularly him and his girlfriend together as a unit when he's on his own. I get you know, he's not as cool. Dr. Fate, another one of my favorite DC heroes. Fantastic. The Atom, who is standing on a giant batarang, which I love. Well, not a giant batarang, a normal size batarang. Cyclone, a character I actually have never heard of. And I love when that happens with United. They're introducing me to new characters. And this big chunky boy, the Atom Smasher. And, oh boy, what's this? I scroll down. Is that purple I spy off the starboard bow? It is. It's Black Adam. He's rounding out as the eighth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, the eighth character in this box. Uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll touch on him a little bit later. But as we go down here, we see player versus player mode, which is the Civil War mode with a DC coat of paint. And this is 
I think it, it may sound boring to say, but this is something that I myself and I think a lot of Marvel United fans were excited for in this campaign was really some of the best features of Marvel United carried over and given a DC coat of paint. And as we see here, that's exactly what's happening with the Civil War into this Clash for Justice. And now we are all hoping and praying that the same thing happens with Sinister Six Assembled. They can just cross out uh, those couple words at the beginning and replace them with Arkham Asylum and every single fan will have their wish come true. And I think Simon knows that. It's only a matter of time. So we have this dashboard. We have red team versus black team. I love it. Uh, we got these color bases, these black ones and these red ones. Um, the population cards again. Uh, and then the location control tracker cubes. Tracker cubes are always fun. Locations come in this box as well as our first team deck. This was how they confirmed we are getting team decks. This add-on brings the legendary heroes and locations surrounding the long-standing Justice Society of America, as well as the struggle between the two godlike beings imbued with the powers of Shazam. Animosity between heroes is nothing new, and the heroes can be fully divided by using the Clash for Justice player versus player mode, pitting teams of heroes against each other. Otherwise, the heroes can be more united than ever by adding the JSA team deck. This is so cool. And I'm not even a PvP guy. I'm just, I love that this box brings so much variety to the table here. So, Clash for Justice, um, as you can see, we can't really get a great, great look at it, but there's the dashboard, very similar to Civil War, if I'm not mistaken. And then they give us the, the typical showcase of all the characters in the box, including starting with Mr. Shazam. Uh, I've always loved how the, the Marvel family's costumes look. Their costumes are just wicked. My favorite part of that Shazam movie was seeing all the kids turn into their adult counterparts with all their different colored Shazam costumes. And it is a crime that they never got around to having him and Black Adam show off in any of the motion pictures. But James Gunn, get on that. So there's Shazam. Look at that. He's got the speed of Mercury three movements in a row. We've never seen that. I don't even think we've seen that with the Flash. Shazam is fast. He's one of the few characters that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Superman and have it be a really fair fight. And they nailed his look, too. That looks like a little kid who's, like, cocky because he's got powers. So it says here that he's got all... The, the traits that uh, go with being who he is, right? He's got the wisdom of Solomon, the strength of Hercules, the stamina of Atlas, etc., etc. All the, the Greek god gifts that are imbued upon him when he says the word Shazam. So a lot of great powers there, very thematic. And oh my god, I just noticed he is standing on a sarcophagus. So he is in Kondak right now, according to his miniature. I didn't notice that at first. And then there's my boy Hawkman, Carter Hall. Yeah, cursed to be endlessly reincarnated across time and space. So cool. The mace. Yeah, I've I've really been looking forward to seeing this guy as a United figure. When I first started playing Marvel United and I started thinking about what DC United might look like, honestly, him and Hawk Girl are the first two characters I thought of, of like, what would they look like with the United art? And here's my answer. Wow, his cards are great too. Perfect colors. He can look at the top cards of any deck because he's a good investigator. He's an archaeologist, so he's smart. He knows how to dig stuff up. He's got two... Uh, equipment cards, including his Thanagarian mace. Love it. So Hawkman can use his death knowledge to look at the top card of any deck, gain extra action tokens whenever he manages to clear a threat. He's decked out with his Nth Metal Harness, which I guess is this other equipment card back here. So he acts as a winged protector with, change, with charge cards, rather, that help him prevent an overflow from happening anywhere near him. And his mace helps him strike a lot harder. Oh no, his wings are the other card. They let him skip over a location when he's moving. And Dr. Fate, one of the most awesome-looking costumes in all of comic books, as far as I'm concerned. Dr. Fate, the, the DC equivalent of Dr. Strange. But again, he's, he's doing his own thing. Look at his cards beautiful those cards are gorgeous uh let's see this top one retrocognition any hero can swap one of their cards in hand with a card at the bottom of their deck so for some heroes who we know have a special bottom of the deck card that might uh, really turn the game on its head and do some interesting things also you know if you just have like a crappy card in your hand like a single move that you don't need and you want to hopefully replace it with something better he's got three equipment cards too they are throwing equipment around left right and center dr fate's deck is filled to the brim with all sorts of spells that give him various additional actions he can use chronokinesis to delay the villain healing magic to replenish his hand cosmic awareness to foresee and manipulate the villain's master plan and retro cognition to allow a hero to swap out a card from the very bottom of their deck. Dr. Fate is even able to banish a threat, Ooh, so it disappears entirely from the game for a few turns, returning somewhere else. That's very on-brand for him, too. Um, and I, I noticed something here. If you look real close at the Helm of Fate equipment card, it says, use on your turn when activating a spell special effect. 
and see how spell is highlighted in blue? So just like the Kryptonian characters who have Kryptonian powers that are highlighted in blue, he's going to have that highlighted spell word throughout his deck too. So that's a new feature to DC Superheroes United that um, we've kind of been glossing over, but there's going to be these key words throughout the hero decks, and it's going to be fun to see how many times they can utilize that. It's very Magic the Gathering of them to, to use keywords like that. Awesome. And then Cyclone, the lady I didn't know anything about. Her real name is apparently Maxine Hunkel. Well, nice to meet you, Maxine. You seem nice. Uh, your cards seem nice, too. Look at that. So she's got uh, wind powers. She's probably going to be real good friends with Red Tornado. Uh, let's see here. Air blasts. Something in each adjacent location. Probably punch. Uh, her her uh, cape is covering it up, but it's probably a punch. So what does it say about her? A Master of Winds Cyclone can project air blasts to knock down enemies in all locations around her. Once its card is charged in the storyline, she can, at any point, flip it to summon protective whirlwinds to shield her from ranged attacks. As her name implies, she can create cyclones strong enough to relocate heroes, great, henchmen, ooh, and villains, ah, across all locations around her, with enough force to smash some of those she doesn't like. <laughs> Sweet. And that's great for those villains who are real slippery, you know, like Mero, who runs away from you when she's vulnerable. Get Cyclone in there to be like, uh, 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 come back here, please. That's awesome. She has almost the exact same color palette as Hope Summers, in fact, who is the only blue hero character from Marvel United that I am missing because I don't have that Phoenix 5 box. Uh, the Adam Ray Palmer. Uh, this art man. Him on a battering. The creativity of the Ant-Man and Wasp figures were always outstanding with the little dice and, and the, the coin. And this is just another great thematic way to show how tiny this guy really is. Now this is the more classic Adam Ray Palmer. The newer Adam that I'm familiar with as well. What's his name? Dr. Choi? Uh, I can't remember his first name, but it's Dr. Choi, I believe. He's more fun and just kind of a, a more comedic take on the character. But uh, we, we're getting the classic Adam here. Uh, look, he's gaining a wild token, very science-y kind of stuff. So it looks like his deck might be uh, a little bit of a mix between science-type characters like Beast and then shrinking characters like Ant-Man. He's got a bio belt, too, that says you can't take any damage during the next villain turn or move and if you do wild uh, he uses his compression technology to become small enough to travel by wires moving around very quickly he can also alter his mass lowering his density to be able to perform heroic actions or increasing it to attack more efficiently that thing traveling by wires that's a great point that's something adam does that ant-man you never really see him do but he really adam gets into technology and zips around through power lines and stuff uh, so i'm glad they're integrating that here awesome and then there's miss black canary Dinah Lance. They nailed her look. They nailed her costume. She's so cool. What a badass character. Um, let's see. She's got a martial arts expert card. Flip this card during a villain turn to ignore one damage you would take or during your turn to punch in your location. Um, oh, I definitely like the thought of flipping that to ignore damage. And then she's got a motorcycle to, to get her where she's got to go. Born into a family crime fighters, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, she's a martial arts expert, ready to flip a charged card at a moment's notice in order to evade damage or strike unexpectedly. She's also a skilled archer, being able to attack at range and even borrow arrow equipment cards from friendly archer heroes. Hmm, you mean the kind of heroes we haven't seen yet in this campaign? What a tease, Simon. What a little tease you are. But her signature move is her powerful Canary Cry, a superpowered shriek capable of stunning any villain or henchman. Yeah, that's her, her power, man. That's what she's known for. She can also be equipped with her trusty motorcycle to get an extra move when it's really needed. She can easily recharge her bike by simply forfeiting the use of her location's end of turn effect. That's a great, simple way to charge a bike, especially if the end of turn effect is just something you don't want. Uh, painters, good luck with those uh, stockings. And then we go down here to Adam Smasher, who I'll admit, I didn't know this character existed until I saw him in the trailer for the Black Adam movie um, and then I found him like buried in some comics I had. I'm like, oh yeah, I totally forgot this guy existed. Uh, but he's a big dude. I don't know if he has, if his origins tie into the Atom. I don't think they do. He did use his powers to become the hero Nuclon, who I am familiar with. But I guess Atom Smasher is just his sort of newer um, alias. And he's a big boy. He's another big chunky boy. Uh, so again, just like the Civil War box, we're getting a big, big guy and a guy who shrinks. So the Atom Smasher, let's see, he can flip this card during his turn to move, then punch twice against a single target in your location. And he's got the same thing we can see here, it's covered, but same thing Stature has where it doesn't count as part of your starting hand, but it's the big black card that lets you probably 
grow, I would assume. Such a big guy starts the game with a big hand, meaning a starting hand card is free, not counting as one of the three cards. If this card is in his deck when he recovers from being KO'd, he can even draw an additional card. Wicked! He can easily stomp out thugs, and by flipping a charged card when needed, he can increase his mass to take a giant stride and crush a single target. And there he is, compared to the Boy Wonder, who serves as a great comparison of just a normal-sized guy. All right, and now here we go. We get to Mr... Black Adam. We gotta call attention to it because everybody is in all the Facebook forums and such. Dual mode character. They're identified by purple colored figures, have components to be played either as a hero or as a villain. Based on what Tiago and Andrea had said during the, uh, the initial video, it sounds like DC, uh, DC corporate, DC legal, didn't love the phrase anti-hero and they didn't love the idea of referring to some of their characters as anti-heroes, I guess. Thankfully, somebody reached a compromise uh, of dual mode character, which um, is not my favorite way of describing these people. Anti-heroes just sounded more fun. But you know what? At the end of the day, they can call them winky pinky poo poos for all I care as long as we get purple characters. So I am fine with this. Uh, we have a purple, our first purple character in the entire campaign, and it's Black Adam. What a way to start. He's floating above an obelisk with some hieroglyphs on it. He's got the power of Aten, where he can punch three times in an adjacent location and move as well. So just uh, the same way that Shazam has all the powers of the Greek gods, Black Adam has all the powers of the Egyptian pantheon. Uh, so there's his dashboard. The blue was an interesting choice. Aside from, you know, the lightning bolt in his chest, there's not a whole lot of vivid bright blue in his color scheme, but okay, yeah, I'll take it. And I actually really like what they say here about his threats. It says, as a villain, Black Adam is seeking the power of the deadly sins to take over the world. These threat cards start face down on the location, so whenever Black Adam bams, he not only devastates all heroes in his vicinity, but also turns face up the sin threat next to him. They each add a different ongoing effect that permeates the whole game. Sloth makes lone heroes slower, pride makes heroes shun the effects granted by locations, Wrath takes a toll on heroes that attack too much. Gluttony removes cards from heroes that gain action tokens. Greed limits the number of actions heroes grant each other. And Envy makes it so that if a hero is too heroic, they lose their ongoing special effects. They left out Lust, I guess, because this is a family game and we don't want to know what Lust would make people do. Uh, when heroes clear these threats, they gain action tokens and also advance on a track that gradually spells out Shazam! Once the heroes complete this magic word, Black Adam instantly becomes under pressure and the heroes can attack him directly to take him out. The regular missions are not used in this game. Okay. That makes me happy and gives me hope, and I'll tell you why. Because if they have a track that's spelling out a word, such as Shazam, it's very possible now that in the near future we could see a track that spells out the word Cultic Zixum which is mixing his pit lick backwards. So come on, come on, let's get it. We know he's coming. And then we got the locations here, which are the Rock of Eternity, the Tower of Fate, the JSA Headquarters, and Kandak. And the Rock of Eternity is very unique in that civilians and thugs can never be there and it can never overflow. That's cool. That's just another great way to make a location a little bit different than all the others. I love it. And then finally, the team deck for the Justice Society of America, which is our way of confirming here that we are getting team decks. All the good stuff from Marvel United with a DC coat of paint. Outstanding. I like this box even more than Metropolis. It's my favorite of the expansion boxes so far. And then it helped us unlock another team deck, a promo team deck, the Young Justice team, which so far is looking pretty slim. Just Superboy, Black Canary, and Red Tornado, but the night is young. We have to remember when we got team decks in Marvel, we already had three seasons worth of characters to add to them. So of course the rosters are going to be small. Uh, so that's that. And then we unlocked Hawk Girl after a few hours, uh, who I like even better than Hawkman. She was just one of the, the cool mainstays from the Justice League cartoons. Awesome character. Her story with Hawkman is just heartbreaking and so good and so unique. Nothing else like it in comic books. Uh, her wings are covering some stuff, but she's got her Nth Metal. She's got a lot of stuff going on with her wings. She's got the Thanagarian Mace equipment card, and they, there's an interesting thing they say here. Uh, Hot Girl has accumulated great knowledge, giving her action tokens when she clears threats. Fused with Nth Metal, she gains action tokens whenever the villain bams in her location, and her Nth Metal wings can cut through several enemies as she flies from location to location. Hot Girl's Thanagarian Mace can make her attack against any enemy deal twice as much damage. If she wants, she can throw it to her lover Hawkman so he can wield it himself even after it's exhausted. That is one of the most thematically awesome things I have seen them do with equipment cards 
literally like she's tossing it to him like here catch and then he catches it and he can use it even if it's exhausted that makes this probably one of my favorite equipments they've ever come out with of course that means you would have to be playing with hawkman but you can always uh, homebrew that just like the black manta stuff with aquaman right we can uh, there's always ways around it magnificent and now as it stands right now it is uh quarter to 11 on monday night we are inching our way slowly towards unlocking captain cold a member of Flash's rogues gallery, a classic Flash villain in every sense of the word. Uh, what a great design on him here. Captain Cold is another character that I was certain would be purple. He's not yet, but remember, I, I always hearken back to Apocalypse. Apocalypse was red for the longest time uh, until people reminded Simon, like, oh, some stuff's happening in Krakoa, and then they made him purple. So if Apocalypse can be purple, Captain Cold sure can, because he has uh, he has proved to be quite the anti-hero as time has gone on. But we got him as a villain anyway, which is awesome. It says here he's out to commit his crimes using his cold gun indiscriminately in order to keep the heroes from getting in his way. Whenever he bams, he adds crisis tokens all around him, freezing those locations. Heroes are simply unable to leave a frozen location, forcing them to first spend actions to thaw their way out. That's so cool. Whenever an overflow happens or a hero is KO'd, Captain Cold adds more face-down master plans in the storyline, shortening his path to victory. Now the challenge is, how are they going to make Mr. Freeze different when we inevitably get Mr. Freeze because this is a perfect way of summing up a guy who shoots things with an ice gun and freezes them and they are both that so if you want to make Mr. Freeze different I think the best way to do it would be to focus his master plan on his wife Nora and on sort of getting her but what makes me really excited is he's got a whole lineup of henchmen the rogues I can't believe I'm seeing the rogues in united form. I've been waiting for this day for a long time. So exciting. We got here Mirror Master, the top, Captain Boomerang, another character who is absolutely going to be purple, Heat Wave, and the Pied Piper. The Flash has a villain gallery that is as extensive as Batman's, if not as famous. So I'm so glad they're getting some love here. Through his threats, Captain Cold gets the support of the rogues. Mirror Master mirrors the latest hero card played, bringing thugs or attacking heroes depending on the symbols there. Pie Piper attracts thugs and civilians to his location. Perfect. Heat Wave burns heroes in his location, though that also unfreezes it. I love that. The top moves heroes out of his location unless they lose a card. Simple as a pimple. I like it. And Captain boomerang strikes heroes all around him using his signature weapon helping further coordinate the rogues efforts an unclearable threat activates all their bands and brings one of them back whenever captain cold ends his movement there that's nuts so if he ends his movement there and he's bamming then they're bamming twice yikes so yeah he's um he's gonna be a formidable threat and i'm I, i'm so happy to see the rogues now hopefully we see them as more than henchmen one day captain boomerang like i said there's no way in hell he's not going to be purple so he'll be a playable hero hopefully a playable villain too show them some love and then there's still other rogues we haven't seen like the weather wizard who's my favorite and the rainbow raider there's a lot of rogues let's end things off by taking a look he needs 930,000 to be unlocked and right now we are sitting at 901,000 so probably won't happen overnight um, when I wake up tomorrow morning we'll probably be much closer but still not quite at 930 what a great day of reveals this new box has really stepped up DC Superheroes United's game at least in this guy's opinion all right and that's where we are sitting right now on uh, the fifth day of the campaign I believe Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, sixth day, sixth day. Math, math is a good thing. It's not what I teach. Uh, yeah, but we are here on the end of the sixth day of the campaign. And so far, the uh, there's still plenty more to come. But man, we got a lot of juicy good stuff in here. So I'm getting more and more excited as this goes on. And I'm sure a lot of people are too. We can probably look forward to a small reveal on Wednesday. Some play mats, maybe some plastic tokens, you know, the, the usual small stuff. And then this Friday... Something big is probably looming over the horizon. But for now, let's start getting those pledges in so we can unlock Captain Cold and the Rogues, okay? Let's do it. So, for now, I will leave you. I'll say goodnight, and uh, I'll see you back here soon for whatever comes next in the Master Plan. Ciao for now.